Hi everyone, this is uh, Darren from SimNation. I uh, wanted to talk to you today about uh, Draft Day Sports College Football 2023, which is a Wolverine Studios title. Um, it seems like just yesterday that Draft Day Sports College Football 2022 was released, and it, it kind of was. It was released at the beginning of 22. Um, I, I will tell you that I'm very happy with the fact that they came out with a new version of the game, the 2023 version, right before the college football season started, or roughly about the same time it started. Um, and I I like the evolution of the title. There's some things I'm not all that keen on. There's some things that I am. Uh, but overall, I think it was a good step in the next direction. And I, I got to give Brooks and the Wolverine Studios folks credit. Um, they continue to evolve this game. They continue to put time into it, and I, I'm very appreciative of it. Uh, Sim Nation, of course, is a bunch of different sim leagues, mostly football at this point. We have to get back into baseball and some other things. But uh, SNCFL is our Draft Day Sports College Football League. Uh, it is running 2023. We made the switch very early on. And then, of course, it feeds into WWPF, who is the Draft Day Sports Professional Football, uh, currently on 2022, but as 2023 releases and they flip to the new season, they'll also flip over to the new version. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the changes in this. Um, some are good, some maybe not so good, uh, but and then kind of give a couple ideas and thoughts to people. I, I don't intend to do a whole new game planning video or recruiting video anytime soon. There hasn't been fundamentally a uh, difference in how those things happened enough that I would want to do another one. Now, I may do some specific ones on pistol and RPO and then talk about the difference between 3 4 and 4 3. I'll probably do those. But I'm not going to focus on game planning and recruiting because I don't think that it really has fundamentally changed from my previous videos. They're up here if you want to take a look at them. I am a bit long-winded and I apologize for that. I try to keep this one kind of short. Uh, so let, let's just jump right in, shall we? Uh, so there are a couple changes in this version. The biggest one has to do with the schedule of events within the game. Uh, so traditionally, you started your new season, you went into staff hiring, you had roughly about five weeks of that, then you went to National Signing Day, you did training camps, you set your red shirts, you began the regular season, you went into bowls, playoffs if you had them, and then you did awards, and then the senior bowl, and then your season ended. Um, so that's not how it runs now. So... Uh, but now you begin your new season, you have staff hiring. Be careful of staff hiring, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, is whoever you decide to get rid of may have a repercussion on your recruiting. Uh, people will decommit if they care about the coordinators or care about the coaching staff you have. That happened this season with Rutgers. They cut a coach, uh, and then they had a top 300 player decommit from so just keep that in the back of your mind. After staff hiring comes four weeks of recruiting. Um, now, I know why they did this. Because of the decommit feature, as well as there really wasn't any recruiting that happened after the conference championships and bowl games all the way up to National Signing Day, except for the National Signing Day sim itself. So largely, you didn't have, you only had one sim to try to do things with transfers or anybody who hadn't committed. Now you have decommits. So they added four weeks for you to be able to do something. So whether you wanted to invite them to see your school, whether you wanted to go in the home with them, of course you're not going to invite them to games. There are no games. There are no high school games either, I think. Uh, or you could do phone calls. But now you can also add recruiting points. You can do scouting. You can do all these things to get a better idea of who they are. Uh, so... It, it's a good idea, but I kind of wish they would have taken that and they would have just put it in the, sign -in, the coach signing and just allowed you to do that as well. Because to me, coach signings are dead sims if you're not hiring anybody. So if you put recruiting in there, it keeps the people engaged and it just makes more sense. Now, one of the other reasons why they did it, and it may be true or not, is 
the difference in the speed of draft day sports college football and draft day sports professional football is drastically different. College football runs very fast. Professional football does not. Uh, and part of that has to do with 10 weeks of free agency as well as the draft itself. So I, I think they put this in to help try to keep them as in sync, but SNCFL feeds WWPF. Uh, I, I will tell you that we've never been able to sync the two leagues. We never probably will be able to sync the two leagues because there's a 10 weeks of free agency. And then on top of it, there's multiple sims for the draft itself, um, which just makes it really hard to sync the two together. So I will prop this season. We didn't do the four four weeks. I probably next season will because I think that there's going to be more decommitting happening, uh, especially as coaches hit the end of their contract. The other thing is, if you want to keep your coaches, and it's the last year of on their contract, if you don't sign them before the season ends, they leave. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, if they're on zero years when the season starts, you need to sign them during the season. If you don't. They will leave, and you're going to potentially experience some decommits. Now, some people have said that decommits can happen in other scenarios. I've only seen it happen based on staffing changes. Uh, but, again, I wouldn't put it past Brooks and them to say that if you over-recruit a position, that someone may decide to leave. Uh, so you have the four weeks of recruiting. Then you have National Signing Day. That doesn't change. Then you have training camp. That's not a change. But n now the next difference comes is there's no set redshirt sim at the beginning of the season. It's at the end of the season. And the reason for that is the way that they've re-architected redshirts is a player can play three games and still redshirt. Uh, if they play a fourth game or more than four games, they're not able to redshirt. Uh, so at the end of the season, what will happen is you'll have a set redshirt. Uh, Sam, where you'll be able to redshirt the players from this previous season and they keep a year of eligibility even if they played three games. So I, I like that function because that mirrors life, right? Um, you'll go through the regular season as normal. Bowl games is the same. Playoffs may change depending on if your league changed it. Um, they added 16-game playoffs. They added 12-game playoffs. So... Of course, that's going to change the amount of weeks of playoffs and how many teams can participate. At SNCFL, we went from 8 to 16, and the way it works for us is the 10 conference champions get an automatic buy, and then there's six at-large teams, which will probably be the six top-ranked teams that are not conference champions. So I, I like that. It may add it adds about two weeks on to it, but um, I, I, think, I think it's worth it, candidly. Um, so... I, I definitely like that change. Uh, awards is the same. Senior Bowl is the same. I mentioned before, set red shirts is right before end season. That's when you will go in and you will say, hey, look, uh, I want to red shirt this person. And the way it works is uh, if you go to roster management and you click on somebody's name, it will tell you whether you can red shirt them or not. The other quick way to look is to see if they have a RS next to them. If they already have an RS next to them, you can't red shirt them. Uh, if they played in more than three games, it won't even present you with the option to redshirt. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you do your depth chart throughout the year. If you really want to redshirt someone, make sure that you're putting your depth charts in a way that does not allow them to play more than three games. So if they've played their three games and you intend to redshirt them, get them off your depth chart. So that way they don't accidentally play because if they play in that fourth game, you're not redshirting them. Uh, and again, it'll show up as a saying release. If it just says release, you can't redshirt that person. But if it says release and redshirt, you can redshirt the person. Uh, and then, of course, it ends the season. So I mentioned the playoff change already is you have 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, or no playoffs. Um, we we do 16. I think that's a great change. I'm, gonna, I'm really looking forward to it because it allows more teams to participate. Uh, recruiting, the main change in that you'll see on recruiting, and let me just show you this real quick, is they changed the point. They were originally on a point system where recruiting would be one point up to 20 points. Uh, and um, 
scouting was, I'm sorry, scouting is 1 to 20. I think recruiting is 1 to 10. Now it's 1,000 to 10,000 for recruiting and 1 to 20,000 for scouting. And of course, scouting is is a cumulative thing. So if you spend 1,000 this week, 2,000 next week, uh, you can spend up to 17,000 more. It will, it caps at 20. Um, so that's one change that they made. I, I like that change quite a bit, honestly. Um, uh, the decommits is the other one. So if there's a staffing change, you over recruit someone, in theory, they can decommit for certain if they value security or they value uh, loyalty. Uh, if you get rid of a coordinator and that was the major selling point of your program to that recruit, they're going to decommit on you. So keep that in mind as you're going through and making staffing changes. Uh, let me talk about recruiting real quick because someone asked me about this and there are a lot of videos out there where a lot of people have their opinions. I have my own. Um, to me, recruiting is broken up into the first three weeks and everything else. The first three weeks, what you should be really spending your money on is scouting as many people as you can and interviewing as many people as you can. The reason for that is uh, it will give you an idea of what they are. So scouting points give you this. Because before you scout them, all you can see is the grade. The grade doesn't tell you much, right? Um, but when you scout them, it will start to put these grades in and actually allow you to see what that person is. Now, as you increase towards 20, the certainty level goes up. Right now, you can see my report certainty is none. It's only because I've spent 1,000 in there out of 20. I don't know who this person is. These will change based as I get more certainty. So will this. Interviews give you personality. Personality is important because it tells you how to recruit the person, specifically these, right? Um, so if you look at this, this person values security. That's your staff. Uh, this person also values loyalty. That's your staff. So if I were successful in recruiting this person uh, and I got rid of, he's a defensive guy, so if I get rid of my uh, not so good defensive coordinator I have, I might be in trouble. But I, I think Aaron LaBelle, who's the head coach, is actually recruiting him. So in this case, uh, I, I, I can get rid of the other dude. And I'll show you why this guy's a dud in a moment. Uh, but the key here is uh, security and loyalty is about your staff and how long you stay on them. The longer you stay on someone who has loyalty that's high, the better chance you have of signing them. It doesn't mean you will sign them. It just gives you a better chance of signing them. Um, but if you're jumping around and you just jump on this person, they're likely not going to sign for you after one or two weeks because they don't value that and you've already shown them that you really don't kill. So to me, you want to try to get your stuff set as early as possible by the end of week three uh, in order to ensure that you are able to identify the people you're going to stay on for a long period of time and the people you just need to get away from. You have no shot at them. So the other thing I look at is offers. I am a big person on if you are a low prestige team or mid prestige team, go after people who have one, zero or one offers and no leader. So if we look at William Lowe, I'm just going to be candid. I probably don't have a great chance of landing this dude, but I'm going to stay on him because he values security and loyalty. But right now, he really likes Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Moron, Louisiana La Lafayette. Versus we have Charles Dean, who it shows nothing for recruiting by, which means it's an open race. I have a chance to get this guy. Now, I just started this week recruiting him too, by the way. So next week, my hope is because I'm the only person on him, that it will show LSU uh, and I should be able to get him. Um, and the reason why I'm recruiting him is the athleticism and the intangibles. I think that this guy's actually going to be a decent center and I want to go after him for that reason. Uh, pay attention to interest. If it doesn't change over time, uh, you're likely not going to get the guy. Now, I will tell you, I have with a lower prestige program than this, UTSA or Texas San Antonio, recruited a four-star 
who had no interest in me throughout the year and in the final week decided to commit to UTSA. Uh, of course, now he is uh, playing in WWPF, uh, and he's on another one of my teams because I drafted him in the first round. But it, it's possible it could happen. The other thing is you want to layer this. So the first mistake I hear a lot of people make, and they send me, hey, you know, I invited someone to a game and they didn't attend the game, and the person's on the road. It's home games. Uh, and also, there's no guarantee that that person's going to choose to go just because you invited them. Uh, for instance, if Maryland, Alabama, uh, USC, Michigan, Louisiana, Monroe, uh, Clemson, uh, Florida State, all of them have invited them to the game, and you are, uh, let's just say, Washington State, I wouldn't expect them to show up that week. You may not ever get a chance to invite them to a home game. But if you're on the road, they're definitely not going to attend. So pay attention to what you are that week. So if you're on the road, don't invite people to games. If you're on the, uh, if you're at home, invite them to games. Uh, I try to do as many phone calls initially as I can. Um, but what I also try to do is, if I'm on the road, I'll do, I'll invite them to see the facilities, or I will attend a high school game, or I'll do a home visit. Uh, so. You want to lay all these. I want to do all of them on the same person in the same week unless you're really trying to just end the recruitment early. Um, I have done that, and it does work. Um, but largely what I do is I try to get people on the phone first. Then I try to get them to a game. Then I go to facility. Then I attend a high school game. Then I do a home visit. Uh, if I can't do that and I really want the person, I'll go in home almost immediately. I can't do some of that with LSU because they have so few outreach points. At Maryland, I can get away with a lot of things because they have so many outreach points that I can go in home almost immediately the same week I do a game. And I have actually nabbed somebody in the first two weeks that was a five-star. Clemson did it, and I'm pretty sure the CPU did the same thing. So again, lay all these in. There's no formula, but some people would say the formula is you do a phone call, then do either a facility tour or invite the game. Week three, try to attend a high school game. And then week four, week five, try to do a home visit. And if you do that, you have a pretty strong chance of getting them. Of course, if it doesn't change off none, you have no chance. It's better to reallocate those points, hide them, and just go after somebody else. Uh, so that's recruiting. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Roster management. I talked about red shirting. That red shirting has now changed. Um, go to roster management. Uh, if you notice, when we get to the end of the season, these guys are all freshmen, right? Especially these two. But I can't red shirt them. Now, when I get to the end of the season, if I were to click on these two, it would show red shirt right about here. And I could click red shirt and red shirt them. I'm not going to be able to red shirt either of these two because they're going to be starting this year. Um, the other thing I want to talk about with roster management that I think is important is, and a lot of people get wrong, is understanding how everything maps to each other. So if you are trying to use an all purpose back or scat back or an outside runnel, you want speed. Uh, let me just switch to running backs real quick. Um, you're going to want speed people. Like, I would never try to run outside a lot with Aug Augustine Henning. He's just not going to do it. He's not very fast. Um, you also want to make sure that they have some form of agility that helps people miss. Um, so if you look, Terry Welch is fast. He's not very agile. None of my running backs are. Uh, but I can outside run with him, and he can also catch because he's got decent hands. Uh, whereas with Greg Rogers, he is my inside back. So I'm going to put him between the tackles and I'm going to run him because he's fairly strong. Uh, he's got decent agility. He's a little bit fast. He's got good hands. He also can block. But the thing I need to watch for is he's not, he's going to draw penalties or he's going to make mistakes and that could hurt me in the long run. Uh, versus you got Terry Welch, he's got skill. Uh, and he's got endurance. Endurance matters because uh, the higher the endurance, the less likely they're going to get tired. Uh, also, the less likely they're going to get hurt. Um, I've already had one major injury. 
uh, James Steele, and part of it is his endurance is not that good. He's last two seasons when he's on the field, he's great, but he's he's missed games because of getting hurt. Um, that's largely roster management. Again, I'm not going to go into the roster management too much because I've talked about that before. Strategy changes. Um, nothing really changes Hill, um, but the major change is substitution logic and counter strategy. Substitution logic is tied into formations. Um, if I go to formations, you notice this, offensive backups. Uh, that substitution logic is using offensive backups as a formation and of course if you were to change that you'd go to depth hit the drop down and go to offensive backups i would just say it defaults to 21 points you need to change that there's very few college coaches who will ever put in their backups when they're 21 points up unless they're 21 points up with less than two minutes left um you want to set it to 42 if you're prick set it to 70 uh, but roughly 35 to 42 is probably the right number. Uh, energy settings, again, if you're one of those people like me who rotate people through formations, uh, and I'll show you a little bit what I mean by that, you're going to want to set these settings as low as possible to the 40 and the 70. If you're one of the people like at LSU where I actually use this because I don't have much depth, I don't want my people coming in and out, I can't rotate them effectively, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this at 60 and 80. Um, I could do 70 and 80, but I, I don't want to do that too much. Um, and again, this this ties back to offensive backup. Coordinators, um, the counter strategy, if you have coordinators who have very good preparation, uh, and I would say four and up, um, can get away with it maybe at three star. Uh, go ahead and set that to auto or click that button unless you just want to do it yourself. If they have less than four, again, three is kind of pushing it. You can get away with three, but if it's two or one or no, uh, don't let that person anywhere near doing it. Mine's unchecked because I have my defensive coordinator. So my offensive coordinator is a very good offensive planner. He's got good preparation. It's roughly about three. My defensive coordinator, I wasn't able to hire one, so I got this guy. He's really bad. He has like half a star. There's no way I'm letting him go anywhere near preparing anything for anyone other than, I don't think the dude could even prepare a pizza. So in this case, um, you would look at your opponent's previous games. I've already looked at records. I know what records is up to. Oh, I think I do. I don't really, but they um, tend to do power running. So I'm going to do power running uh, and then man. Um, I'm choosing man because I don't think that the defense is going to blitz me much. They had two sacks in their last game. It doesn't look like they're getting a lot of knockdowns or uh, hurries. Those are things I would look at is I go to box score, I look at knockdowns, I look at hurries, I look at sacks. If you see a lot of that, that's a team that's blitzing. and You probably want to prepare by preparing for the blitz. Uh, if you see a lot of running between the tackles, that's power running more than likely um, or inside running. But power running will show up as power rushing plays. Um, the reality is I'm probably going to just say inside running for Rutgers and go from there. Outside running, of course, is sweeps, pitches, things like that. Um, and then short, medium passing. You can actually see what the passing is and then set it. Um, so th those are the major changes in that. Formations, there are two changes here. One before you had points. Uh, so if you wanted to say, I'm spending, uh, I want to spend 75% of my time with rushing offense or formation one or default. And then I want to have offensive package three be 25. You would have set three and then one hill. Three, four, equals 75%. Uh, but they've changed it to percentages. So now what you would do is if you wanted to do that, you would say like 25 hill and then put it in again because... It just does that, and then that gives you the same thing. And then, of course, if you want to back it out, you do a zero. Uh, the offensive backups for people who used offensive formation five or defensive formation five, you can't anymore. It's backups, and 
whether you like that or not. I would have preferred to seen a little button that says allow me to do offensive backups and if you do it it uses formation five. Uh, but I, I get why Brooks and them did it and I, I, I don't have a preference one way or the other because I only use four. It's not a big change for me but for some people it's a very big change because if you think about it there were some coaches out there that were making very specific uh, formation choices. So if you think two tight end, uh, pro set, shotgun, spread, eye formation, or wishbone if you want to throw that in there. That's five, right? So if you uh, were moving people around based on formations, you would need to have that ability. Uh, and you've now lost it, so now you only have four. Um, I, I, I would tell you traditionally in game planning, um, I do use five formations. I will tell you that right now, but I, I rotate wide receivers. I rotate running backs. I rotate tight ends. I rotate linebackers, cornerbacks, defensive ends, defensive tackles, but I don't really rotate them based on the set that they're in. I rotate them based on who I want in for very specific circumstances like run or pass uh, or if I want someone in for a nickel package. So that, that's one of the reasons why I use formations less. I also, in the past, use it to rotate people in and out to keep them fresh. Uh, so for me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I do understand why it's a big deal to some. Uh, so those are the, really the biggest changes out there um, that I can think of. Uh, play analysis, I've talked about that in the past. There are some new chain, new plays. I don't know if that's Brooks or Frankie. Um, I know Frankie did a lot of the plays for 2022, but I, I do like some of the new plays that they added, uh, more RPO. I know some people really don't like the RPO, but um, I one of the things I think that's still missing, just a rant here for a second, is play action. Just put play action in the game. I, I mean, it's in college football. Uh, I, I don't really care about the whole 4-2-5, 3-3-5 debates and stuff like that because if you're running a 4-2-5, I, I have a news flash for you. There is actually a formation that is a 4-2-5. Uh, so you can use that. But I do understand why some people would want it because there's a huge difference between a 4-2-5 and, say, a nickel. Um, so, but uh, I, again... Those are the major changes. Uh, I do like what I see. I think it's a good evolution. There are some bugs. Uh, Brooks has done a great job of addressing the bugs. We're already on like version, subversion three. So he's continuing to evolve it and make those changes. And I, I really like the product. Uh, if you want to join a great community, think about SNCFL. Uh, I'll put the links in the video, but um, it's there are a lot of great players here. Uh, I mean, some of the best coaches I know uh, in this space are playing this game. Uh, you have Skeletal, who's on a two-season uh, championship spree right now, uh, and he's doing really good. You have Stewart with his Michigan and his, I always get it wrong, I think it's Western Michigan, um, but he's doing great as well. Uh, you've got Gary at Miami, you've got um, Shark, who uh, continues to take different teams. I think he's got Iowa State. He's doing a whole series of videos on that, but he's doing a great job there. Uh, you got Van at NC State, and unfortunately, he's at UW, whereas I'm at Wazoo, and that just hasn't quite worked out the way he wanted to. But Stewart has also UCLA, where he's been a thorn in my side at Washington State. Uh, you got Travis at Florida. Uh, state. I mean, it's a great community. I would recommend joining it. We have lots of open teams. Some big ones like Alabama are still open. Um, we don't necessarily play to real life. Louisiana Monroe is in the SEC, but I had to get them out of the Sun Belt because Skeletor was having a, essentially a cream puff schedule every year and didn't have to work that hard to get into the playoffs. Uh, so it's my way of slowing them down. Um, but I, I would highly recommend it. And it, we have a Slack channel, we have Discord, we also have forums here at Sim Nation. So if you want to join and take a look around, let me know. Uh, we are going to stand up some other leagues uh, in time, so uh, just be on the lookout for that. But this is my thoughts on Draft Day Sports College Football 2023, uh, and really focus more on the changes. Um, I will do some more videos, but I, again, I'm going to focus more on things like RPO, Pistol. 
the defensive side of the game uh, with when to use a 4-3 versus a 3-4 versus when to use a 3-3-5 versus a nickel or dime. Uh, not a big fan of quarters, um, but I, I'll try to help you navigate that and also explain why maybe you have these great fast secondary people, cornerbacks, free safeties, strong safeties, yet they're not getting past deflections, they're not picking the ball off, and generally you're just getting burned. Um, I, I can help explain some of that. Um, again, there's some variance, but I'll do some videos dedicated to that. So that's kind of it for now. Uh, hopefully you find this video useful, and uh, I will hopefully see you on the field.